It's our last show of the year. We're talking the NBL Championship Series. The Jack Jumpers, they won it. John Casey talks NBL and the state of the WNBL. It is a bad week to be a beer in Tassie. Let's go. <laughs> this is the Basketball Show with Shane the Hammer Heel. What they going to say next? Yes, this is the Basketball Show, all thanks to Code Sports, Boost Mobile and the Throwback Store. It is our last show of the season, Hammer. Where did that time go? 24, 25 weeks? Yeah, I know. It's Great been crazy. to see you got the memo. And we came matching, obviously. Finally oh, yeah. got there. <laughs> uh, what a week to be a Tasmanian. It, the feel-good story, the Jack Jumpers champions. I think everybody in Australia outside of Melbourne were barracking for Tassie, right? Well, don't I, don't know, I don't know about that exclusively, mostly, but yeah. mostly. And, and how good, like you heard the premier get interviewed during the game, and he's talking about the injection of new courts and funding, and you know the explosive nature of basketball in Tassie. Great, fantastic stuff for an expansion team to get these results is just incredible and well done to everybody involved. No, it's amazing. Uh, I was thinking back the other day to game one when they got absolutely pumped by 20-something points. I interviewed Jack McVeigh at the start of game two. Yes. And I said, you know, we, we went through a few questions and I was like, look, there are always positives and negatives to take from every situation. Was there anything that you kind of lean on from game one? And he literally said to me, the fact it's a five-game series. Yeah. <laughs> that, like they were, it felt like they were down and out at that point backs against the wall but that's you know at the end of the day i picked them joe i don't know how many people did but th that's <laughs> what right, that's what made me horse. that's what made me pick them okay is their resolve the, the yeah. amount of times that they were down they just didn't give up it was in their dna it was their culture that they just kept fighting and found a way and um i mean unbelievable series that the last three games are decided with a shot on the buzzer is incredible stuff and to think that the away team won three straight games is yeah. incredible as well. Like it, we haven't seen, you know, these sort of things before, and um, you know, it was always going to be a flip of the coin this series, and uh, and we got exactly what we we thought. Uh, it was awesome, uh, and I think it it speaks to just the way that that Tassie play, where different guys like this man on on screen now in what that first half of game five was unbelievable but but then Milton Doyle would be quiet and then he, he was their finisher third third quarters fourth quarters and each each guy you know stepped up at different times and and they allowed for that Magne playing with a hamstring injury mm -hmm. and you know that man Jack McVeigh you know the way he lives his life and you know I've known Jack since he was a teenager and um, great kid great family um, but he changed his mindset and the way he lives and the way he trains and the way mm. he believes to be able to have this success, he's, he's earned it and, uh, and deserves it. So, you know, well done to all of those, all of those guys involved. Just, just a great story and uh, I was really happy to see them get the W. And I feel for Melbourne United because... It'll sting. They, they've been the benchmark all year. You mm. know, they're, they're really well managed and coached. Um, but I didn't see... The same mindset. When guys were coming off the court, I mentioned this on the show last week, they, they weren't the same as the bench in Tassie. The, ben mm -hmm. the, the players coming off and standing there and supporting their team, they were always engaged. That wasn't the same in Melbourne. I, didn't, I just didn't feel like they had that. You look at Daly and he just gave it everything he's got. And Chris Golding, they were the ultimate pros. And Daly had an incredible series. That, if they win that game, he's the MVP of the series. He knocks down that half-court shot. If he knocks down that half-court shot, but the, he didn't. Jack <laughs> McVeigh did in uh, a couple of games earlier, and he gets it, deservedly so. Yeah, no, it was brilliant. Uh, already looking forward to next season. Still plenty of basketball happening, though. Um, let's keep things moving and get into our starting five. Time for our starting five. We're going to begin over in the States. The final four okay. of the NCAA tournament is yep. upon us. The women playing Saturday, Australia time. The men playing Sunday. It's been fun. Is it just me or is it more interest in the women's game right now in the college? Is that just I, me? I, no, I, I think that's probably fair I've to seen say. nothing of the men's. I have no interest in college basketball, particularly for the men's. Uh, I think the whole tournament's been good. I mean, and yeah. we, we had some, some up, Aussies yeah. in as well. Um, Tyrese Proctor was the last guy standing, yep. knocked out in the Elite Eight. Um, and last year, Polo and the women for LSU, knocked out by Caitlin Clark, 
Did you see that performance? Nine that threes. was ridiculous. You know what impressed me most? She got up 18 threes in a college game. <laughs> she's amazing. She uh, put on a show. You know, she's been offered $5 million from Ice Cube to play in the big three. Mm -hmm. How good is that for women's basketball? Well done. No, it, it, it's awesome. Um, and you say the women's basketball is, is it kind of takes over at this time of year. These, these girls yeah. are absolute superstars. Um, she's up against uh, UConn yep. in the, the final four. Uh, so the other game, NC State and South Carolina. It's actually the first time that two schools have got both men's and women's teams in the final four. So right. NC State and UConn. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, the women's competition, much more competitive than the men. Um, Purdue uh, are going to be tough to stop, but um, yeah. it'll, it'll be fun either way. So a good weekend of, uh, of viewing there. Uh, the final four in Europe as well. Ezzy playing for Prague. So that's pretty exciting coming up. Amazing. Yeah. That is such a big thing in Europe. And uh, I think we've said it before on the show, but uh, good luck to Ezzy. She's had a great season. She's a superstar, and uh, hopefully she continues that form and takes it with the Opals into uh, into Paris. Exactly right. News in the family too, Shyla, playing over there in uh, Lyon. How's she settling in? Yeah, good. She's walked into a difficult situation. They've lost five games in a row, and they've had three of their WNBA stars that are all injured. Two mm -hmm. won't return. They're still hoping that uh, Johannes comes back, but uh, owned by Tony Parker, so it's a big team. They're a big Euro League team. I love that. And uh, so, yeah, no, great opportunity. She just has to try and make a difference and try and help turn it around. Yeah, fingers crossed. It's pretty but exciting. But six, six, um, six players on the French team that, are, well, have been on the French team yeah. for Paris. So a uh, little bit of intel there. So they're, they're stacked. Um, are you going to get over and see no, any? No, absolutely zero chance I'll be here. Why? Oh, I'd like to. Maybe next year. Go to Paris? Yeah. yeah. Paris. Eat the cheese and bigger. Not cultured enough for that. <laughs> um, we're going to stick with uh, women's basketball. Georgia Moore. Yes. Uh, has entered the transfer portal to play another season of college basketball, so will not be entering the WNBA draft. Were you shocked when you heard this? No. Why? Um, my first thought was good on her, actually. For what reason? Well, okay, I, I think my first thought was she's getting paid. So she... On the nil deals? I, yep. I, I would say so. I don't yep. have any details around it, but that was just where my kind of mind went. Because yeah. she's playing, what, a fifth season of college basketball. She was set to be probably picked up in, in the draft. She's been a, she a, a star yeah. for Virginia Tech. Yeah. So I, I think she's probably been offered some money to play, to yeah. keep playing college. Well, I mean, I hope she has. I was more shocked that I thought she had a great season mm. um, in that third team, you know, nationally. Um, but only like less than one percent of these kids are going to go pro. You're playing yeah. against kids. I just thought it was time for her to, you know, become a pro. She's yeah. a great player. Like you've already dominated. I think she's had a, such a good year. You've dominated that level against the kids. Um, less than one percent of them will ever get going. Maybe she's just loving it though. Yeah, she and looks that's like true. she looks like she's it's, it's amazing, thriving. Isn't it? And then potential to come back into the WNBL. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But that's an absolute. You know, yeah, cluster. yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I don't, yeah, and some kids love college, mm. absolutely love it, don't want to leave it, will take a fifth year, and others hate it and want to come back, you know, and transfer from bad reasons. And you hear so many conflicting stories. I mean, good on her, she had a great year, so um, excited to see sort of what happens in the next chapter. For no, her. exactly right, it's been awesome to see her on you know the ESPN coverage and all that yeah. kind of thing, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, now, you guys talked about free agency on the show last week, yes, um, that has been announced for April 15th, finally. Um, like it hasn't already been negotiated. You, right? Like everyone knows uh, where they're going, what's going <laughs> on, right? Uh, you know, your Geordie Hunters, Bull Qualls, uh, Will McDowell White. Um, yep. What about the imports, though? So I want to play a little bit of a game right now. Okay, I like games. There, there are, you know, a number of imports that are staying put, but there are a number who, you know, we don't know where they're going to end up, whether yep. they'll stay with their clubs, whether they'll be somewhere else within the NBL. Um, okay. I want to just throw some names at you. Yay or nay, and a quick why. Okay. Um, so we'll start with Jordan Crawford. Crawford, oh, I'm not, uh, he had an unbelievable year. And I wanted to say this, he, what he did in the grand final after really struggling is take so much mental toughness because mm. he struggled badly at the money end of the year. So for him to come through, hit those shirts would have been a relief and I just felt so happy for him. I'm not sure that he will get picked up there you know, maybe a Cairns. I, I'm not, 
based on what he did in the grand final, you think he's going to get picked up, but mm -hmm. I, I'm not so I'm not so sure, and um, which is probably funny because he did come through at the biggest time, but yeah. uh, I'm just not convinced. So they've already got Milton Doyle locked in, and their other import Marcus Lee. They could have two changes. I don't think they'll get they'll bring Lee back, especially when you got Magna. If he's fully healthy, mm -hmm. you know he's really a backup sort of player, Lee. Yeah, but, and he's been serviceable. Don't get me wrong, but I think that's where they'll be looking to improve. And they're going to have to, even though they've won the championship, other teams are already mm. getting ready. You, like yeah. the Kings are spending money; they're going to be so much better under Gorgian. Teams are going to rebuild, so then they have to think the same way. How are they going to get better? Yeah. Okay. Speaking of the Kings, uh, DJ Hogue. <sighs> I could see him in the NBL, mm -hmm. not for the Kings. He's not a Gorgian type player. Right. I mean, a lot of injuries, hardly played, doesn't look like the toughest sort of guy, highly talented. I'm not sure he sort of gives you everything. Mm -hmm. Didn't play with a lot of passion for me. But he could still end up somewhere because he's got a whole lot of talent. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Zylan Cheatham, the Breakers. I think Cheatham will be highly recruited. I think he'll definitely be back if he's not in Europe. Mm -hmm. But I think our league is better suited for him. Um, it's tough in Europe. We're, you know, I'm looking at some of the numbers from the NBL imports that have gone overseas now. Yeah. Five points, six points, not doing a lot. It's mm. tough. If you go to a good league in Europe, it really separates the, the really good imports from the rest. Very quickly on the breakers, um, if you're Modi Mayor, now that Parker Jackson Cartwright is available again, are you taking him back? Is he available again though? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. He lasted 11 days in... Uh, where was he taking? I thought I understood that he was going home, but he's still contracted for next year. Oh, okay. But I could be wrong with that. Um, every, like Detail, I did not most really. teams, most teams would be looking to try and sign him. I think yeah. if they need an American point guard, he is fantastic. He's one of my favourites. Tyler Harvey. Well, I think based on the fact that he's going to become an Australian shortly, he becomes valuable for a team. Yeah. Just have to carry him as an import in the meantime. Yeah. And I say carry Will him. Will he be back at the Hawks? Oh, well, you'd have to think that Gorge would be trying to throw a packet at him, wouldn't they? Wouldn't he? In Sydney. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to get more money playing for Sydney. Oh, um, see, I would have thought he'd get less money playing away from the Hawks because he, he's on a bag at the Hawks. Oh, okay. Well, see, I think he'd get good money playing in Sydney, and maybe that's why Gorge traditionally goes for tough-nosed defensive players mm -hmm. that can complement somebody like him because he's not a great defender. Um, but he can hit big shots, so maybe plays a valuable role when he becomes Australian. Yeah, okay. Well, he does love it out here in Australia, so that would be quite cool. Um, well, I don't think he's going to have that many options. I don't think Europe... I don't, he can't make the money that he makes here in Europe. Yeah, okay. I feel like if no one picks him up, it'd be like shooting Bambi. Yeah. No, he'll, he'll get picked up. <laughs> he's based he's, on the he's fact such a, a fan favourite down there in Wollongong. Uh, Ian Clark. He's funny, isn't he? Funny one, because he's a big-time player. He helps teams win. Um, happy to play a role on a big team. I don't think he's a small-team player. I think he needs to play on a big team mm -hmm. where he plays that complementary role as that veteran. Um, so it's just whether somebody's prepared to keep paying him to play that role. Will he be back in Melbourne? Well, I guess it depends on what else they sign and how much he they have to pay him compared mm -hmm. to what else they can get for the same sort of budget. Yeah. He, he certainly adds value for a team, but there'll be other teams that need more than what he can provide right now. I think he's perfectly suited for the way he, he was used for Melbourne and the way he was used for Sydney. Last one, not an import but a marquee, Mitch Creek. Oh, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Um, you know... I, I, th I think it's time for South East Melbourne to move on mm -hmm. with Mitch Creek. You know, he, he's been a great player and he, he is a good player and he's a franchise player, but I think that time should be done. I think he needs to move on. Now, whether that's playing in Australia, he could definitely play in Europe. He could definitely earn big money in Asia. He's that type of player in Asia. He would just put up some really big numbers. Traditionally, that league is for big guys and mobile guys. Um, so he would be fantastic there. So if he decides to roll the dice overseas, that's where I see him going and being able to earn a lot more money than he can in Australia. Interesting one. He um, welcomed Nathan Sobey to South East Melbourne on social media okay. when that was announced a what week do you or think? so ago. I, well, I'm wor working out whether you read into that or not. Yep. But... Who knows? Uh, something tells me he won't be in the NBL. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Five.
very many again. Here's Austin. Bob to James. Throw it down, LBJ. And they get entertained early. There he is, the king, kicking off our Boost Mobile Hoops highlights. Four. Well, they're not the Lone Ranger in that regard. Luca has done this, done to many teams this year. What? I'm too what? ready to leave, man. And Capra on the leak out. Here is that, that outrageous scoop. What do I do? I just throw it up. Three. Mantero. Powers it down. Here we go. Marching to the rim. And now he's able to just collect use that stretch to go right over the top of the defense Boy, that's just awesome two Giannis. Oh, good. Oh, good. get the rim and take it coast to coast nice crossover to set up that dunk one Kitty looking, looking inside the pass. Jump shot is up. It's good. With 1.8 remaining. Gilgis Alexander nails it. One of the MVP favorites with the game winner at the Garden. Those are your Boost Mobile Hoops highlights. We've talked a little bit about the final series already, but got to get some more with John Casey, who joins us from Adelaide. Case, how are you doing? Really well, Joe. Still trying to come to terms with that grand final game five. Good to see you, Hammer, as well. It was an amazing finish. The atmosphere in Melbourne was fantastic. And, wow, what a script we had where Tassie had a shot to win it in game four, couldn't do it. Melbourne had a shot to win it in game five, couldn't do it. And the Jack Jumpers win the title in their third season. It was brilliant. Uh, what did you make of it? Unbelievable. I mean, we said at the start of the series, this is a flip of the coin. These two teams are so close. But who would have thought the last three games, as you said, Case, would have come down to the last shot of the night and that all three teams uh, won on the road? You know, outstanding stuff. Just really, really good for the NBL of how close um, the NBL season has been. And uh, well done to everybody involved. Yeah, exactly. We have right. recency bias in terms of grand finals a little bit, don't we? But the 2018 series between Melbourne and Adelaide was outstanding. The first ever best of five, Sydney West, Sydney, where it was big brother, little brother, and Sydney down 1-2 and getting across the line. That was fantastic as well. But in this series, with those finishes you just mentioned, Hammer, and also the fact both teams took an identical number of shots over the five games, 375 field goals they took. And for those people who are a little concerned about the refereeing, both teams had 90 fouls called on them as well. So I think the refs deserve a shout out. They did a good job. We all make a few mistakes here and there, but one for the ages and certainly shows that the NBL is probably in a better spot than it's ever been in the history in the 46 years. So let's talk about what's next, especially for Melbourne United. Uh, a few of their guys obviously leaving. We've got Brad Newley on his way out. A couple of the other guys off contract. What, is, what does the future look like for United case? Look, I think they're in a reasonably good position, Joe. They've got a number of players under contract that they're keen to keep, i.e. Matthew Delavadova, Chris Golding, Shea Illy, Luke Travers under contract at the moment. Tanner Krebs played an important role as well. But it's their young stars coming through as well. And I speak of Flynn Cameron in particular and Kyle Bowen, who I think have got a lot of upside now. So they've got seven players under contract. Yes, they're going to lose Hook 40. Yes, Ian Clark isn't under contract, but they've got resources to go and get three good imports. And as we saw this year, most teams had seven, eight, nine players change over from the year before. So it's just the way that the NBL is. We're trying to restructure that a little bit and get some continuity in the teams, which I think will make them more successful. But I think Melbourne, when you compare them with most others, given who they've got under contract, and given the resources that they have, that they're going to be one of the competition front runners again. Well, we've, we've always seen them recruit well. Dean Vickerman knows exactly what he wants to fit his culture. I guess the question mark is going to be whether Travis does go to the States, but there's been talk that White could come back and potentially replace him. He could come back anyway. Uh, potentially and have Travers as well but as you point out they've got three import spots they only used one this year so they've got the budget to be able to go and find pieces to be able to rebuild as well so there will be a little bit of turnover I would imagine but I think in most teams this year there's going to be some sort of 
turnover. But when you flip it to Tassie, I think they've got seven under contract. Interesting to see what imports they bring back. I'd be surprised if Lee comes back. I actually would be surprised if they brought Crawf Crawford back, considering how, how amazing he was in that one game. Prior to that, he really struggled, and they may be looking to probably bring somebody in that's probably a little bit more consistent uh, towards the end of the season, I would have thought. What do you think, Case? Yeah, look, a great moment just on Justin uh, J Crawford, of course, because when that game finished and they won the title, he embraced Coach Scott Roth, and Jordan Crawford said to him, and I was standing alongside and heard it, he said, Coach, thanks for having faith in me. Because you're right, Hammer, he was on a downward slide there during the playoffs, didn't play well in the series against Perth apart from one game. And in the game, a series against Melbourne, it was that last game that where he really stepped up at six threes and equaled his career high of 32. But let's not forget, during the majority of the season, his numbers were almost identical to Bryce Cotton. So he is a player that can compete in this league and his, his history shows us what he can do. But Doyle is under contract. And you're right, look, they've got the core group there. Doyle, Prislovic, McDonald, McVeigh, Steindl and Magne on a new two-year deal. So they've got plenty to work with. Anthony Drimmick and Majuk Deng are out of contract. And I would expect that they want to sign those two guys, but they have may have other suitors as well. So when I look through the the list of players that teams have signed for next season already they have under contract. The two teams that seem in the best position are Melbourne and Tasmania. So for every other team, it's a matter of get your skates on and uh, try and rise to their standard because they're setting the bar pretty high and you need to try and get up there with them. If you're Dean Vickerman and Scott Roth, who, who, who is the one player for each of those coaches that they are looking to, to hold on to and re-sign for next season? Well, I think for Tassie, it's Jack McVay. Um, look, what he's done, the way he played during that grand final season, what he brings to the table, not only on the floor, but off the court as well. I think he's absolutely outstanding and he's risen right to the highest level of career best for him this year. So Jack McVay is so crucial there. And for Melbourne, I think it's Della Vadova again. Look, he was outstanding during that grand final series. Um, he's got that pedigree, the experience. Chris Golding is another one who's coming off his best year in the NBL in his 17th season. Now, using an AFL analogy, Taylor Walk from the Adelaide Crows had his best year last year ever. And this year, he's off the boil dramatically. So once you get a little bit older, you can slip quickly. But I don't think that's going to be the case with Chris Golding. His three-point shooting was outstanding. And really, statistically, you could argue this is the best three-point shooting season in the history of the NBL with his numbers, his percentage in a 40-minute game compared to the 48-minute era when Hammer was starring and still holds the overall record in terms of threes hit in a season. I, I think, Case, you, you make some really good points. And I think Australia ha has been really quick across all sports to try and retire their stars at 30. And the media are guilty of this. Oh, when are you going to retire? When are you going to retire? Um, but the NBA has embraced experience and older players for a long, long time where they see that is a great thing for the culture of their club and their locker room and everything else. And as you rightly say, now we're starting to see players really excel in their mid-30s. So I think it's fantastic. All right, guys, we're going to talk about the WNBL. Obviously, the dust has settled on the season now. The Southside Flyers enjoying their championship. But it seems that there are maybe some, some issues behind the scenes in terms of ownership. We know that there are some players in the league that haven't actually been paid for their services for last season yet. Case, what are you hearing about the WNBL in terms of uh, the sale, what's happening in Adelaide as well? What are, what have you, what are your thoughts on it? Well, Joe, it's a really difficult situation, isn't it, at the moment? And we should point out that it's not just, not just the WNBL, but it seems to be sports across the board as well. We know the netball uh, competition in Australia has had horrendous problems up until recently as well. And all sports can struggle a little bit because it really is a situation where you need to find investors who are prepared to take some losses to get this competition to where it needs to be. And right now, the competition is fantastic. The grand final series was outstanding. We've got a higher quality of player per capita in terms of overseas players in the WNBL than we do in the NBL. And we know how good Australia is. We're going to vie for a, a medal at the Olympics coming up in Paris this year. So all the ingredients are there, but it is just hard in the current economic environment to make money. And that's where the problem lies. Look, two weeks ago, I was told 
that the WMBL and Larry Kesselman were going to form a relationship and it was going to be, uh, you know, full steam ahead. And that's what Larry's done with the MBL and the MBL One product as well. So we know that the privately owned teams like here in Adelaide with Polygra and we know in WA with the WA Basketball Association, it is, it's a tough scenario for them in terms of finances. But I'm glass half full at the moment because I'm so optimistic with the standard of competition we have, the great players, the history of it. There's no reason that it shouldn't succeed. And I really hope they can find a way to make this work because it is one of the best female basketball leagues in the world. Well, it is case and all of the points you make are, are really valid and, and correct. And, you know, the standard of the league has been great for a long time, but it hasn't been financially stable for a long time. And I think that, you know, I, I got excited a couple of weeks ago, too, when I heard that Larry Kesselman was going to take over the league because we've seen what he did with the NBL. He's taken it to a whole nother level. Now the clubs are really starting to be profitable and the, the crowds are increasing. They're trying to do a big TV deal as well. But under Basketball Australia, we certainly haven't seen that. And so what we've been told is that uh, every team, uh, there may be one team that breaks even, but the majority of teams lose money and significant money. Um, the teams that are owned by associations like WMB, uh, WA uh, Association can't continue on. They can't lose, they can't continue to lose money. They can't fund it. So unless somebody comes in and buys that Perth franchise, then there's doubt of whether they will continue. Uh, Melbourne Boomers have been on the market for a considerable amount of time. Uh, and as it stands right now, I'm told that the Melbourne Boomers are out for next year. People have sort of been, uh, haven't understood. They've thought it's either Geelong taking over the license and moving to Geelong, or it stays in Melbourne. But from what I understand, that's not the case. It'll be no Melbourne uh, and Geelong. And I wouldn't understand, I don't understand why you wouldn't take it to Geelong. A great consortium that's owned by very successful businessmen, also in conjunction with the Geelong Basketball Association. And I played there. I know how good that market is down there. The Ford Club Arena holds you know, a couple of thousand people and the atmosphere would be fantastic. Uh, there is talk that uh, Adelaide uh, hasn't been able to pay their bills as well. Um, so the, it's in disarray at the moment. We need somebody to be able to come along uh, and we need Basketball Australia to be reasonable in what they think that the league is actually worth for somebody to come in because Larry's not going to overpay. We know that, but he'll put his money where his mouth is about bringing good people in to be able to turn that around and make it viable for a lot longer to come. So fingers crossed that the WNBL does succeed right now. So when you talk about clubs losing money each season, we're, we're not talking little money, are we? We're talking in the, in the millions, essentially. Well, I'm not sure any individual clubs losing millions, but I think combined, it, it's, up there. It's, a, it's a lot of money. So... Uh, and and if, you're, if you're not owned by wealthy owners, then it's very difficult to find that money every year, like a, an association that's coming out of, you know, funds that are coming from parents paying their, their kids' fees and things like that. Is there a world where we know that, um, that Larry and, and the NBL sort of look after that, NBL one as well, is there a world where it naturally, a BA just naturally almost get forced out and their hand is forced? Well, but I'm not sure that it comes down to Basketball Australia, what they're prepared to give it up for. My understanding is they are, they are placing a, an astronomical number on what they think the league is worth. And it's simply not true. You can't justify by any, any means. So I'd be disappointed if that was the case and it you know, came down to money because they should just give it to Larry. In my mind, give it to Larry to make sure that players are keeping their jobs and that the, then you start expanding. There's more jobs. There's that much talent in Australia. Newcastle should have a team. How is there not a team in Brisbane? You know, like we need to expand and it takes people with money and foresight and the right people to be able to make that happen. And right now, Basketball Australia have shown, under Basketball Australia's guidance, the NBL had no team in Sydney and no team in Brisbane. At the same time, Brisbane were out of the league over a five-year period in the NBL. And I think Sydney were out for two or three years. People don't remember that. That's how it was. And it was only through Larry that it actually came back and then started to get to the levels that we're talking about. It feels like there's an opportunity to capitalise on just how big the women's game is at the moment across the world. Um, but yeah, time will tell. Hey, Case, thanks so much as always. Uh, appreciate you coming on the basketball show throughout the season. And we'll, uh, we'll check in again come September. We appreciate your case. You've added to the show, mate, every, each and every uh, week that you've been on. So uh, thank you very much, mate.
Oh, very kind, Hammer and Joe. Look, it's been a great uh, pleasure to be with you guys as well. Really enjoyed it. The show's doing uh, some wonderful work promoting the sport in Australia. And let's hope that they can come into agreement. Basketball Australia and Larry Kessman have done a great job in the NBL. Let's hope they can do it with the WNBL as well because the players deserve it. I look forward to next season. All right, time to talk a little bit of NBA. Uh, obviously, coming to the end of the regular season... Who wins it from here? Who did you have at the start of the season? I had Boston, and I'm not changing from here. I haven't. There's mm, nothing enough. that uh, I have seen that would uh, influence me to change my decision. They're okay. just so deep. They can defend. They can score in multiple ways. They're pretty good. They've, they've looked good, haven't they? I yep. I got on the Bucks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you fell for that old chestnut. I did. I, ah, I did. Um, I won't change my decision, but I also don't think you're <laughs> they're a little worried at the same it. time. Well, you I never know. know, though. I mean. They could get hot. They've got the talent. We know yeah. that. But they just probably haven't shown that they've been able to blend things together the same way as Boston has. Who did you have as your MVP? I didn't. I don't think I had a selection of MVP, but gee, it's close. Um, see, I, I still like the Joker. Mm. I know everyone finds somebody else now, and Luca, Derek was talking about last week, and, you know, um, Shay has been unbelievable. Yeah. But I still like Jokic. I just, I, I don't know. I love he's, him. He, I, he's fun to watch as well. I had Luca at the start of the season. Yeah. I don't know if he'll get there. He's, 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 he's been unbelievable, he, hasn't he? He's been amazing. He'll get one at some point. I just think, I yeah. don't know, maybe it's the positioning. I'm not sure. Um, any big changes in the NBA next season? Thompson has to get out of the Warriors Clay, for both okay. sides. He needs mm. to go and they need him gone. Something needs to change there. And we thought, it, we thought it would happen in, the, um, in February, didn't we? But yep. Didn't happen. It'll ha I, it has to happen, I think. They're pretty conservative, but I think it has to happen. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's just about all we've got time for. I have a shout out to the New Zealand Breakers for their oh. April Fool's Tom Abercrombie is the next New Zealand Bachelor. I fell for it. Oh, that really? was bad. Yeah, I had to sort of have <laughs> a word, word with myself after that <laughs> one. <laughs> Some of those are pretty good, though. Their, their um, media department do a great job. I saw one online and it reminded me of a wife. The kids put something on the back, stick your finger up and honk at my mum for April Fool's. Yeah. And for the whole, they videoed the whole thing and <laughs> check it up online. <laughs> it was so funny. They had me in stitches. She was <laughs> irate. <laughs> anyway, I love it. I love hey, it. Um, April, Fools, we, April Fools is a bad day to yeah. be in sports media and a journalist. Before we go, big, I want a big shout out um, for John Casey. I mean, like he's the best in the business. Mm. He's been, he's the voice of basketball. Yeah. Um, Derek Rucker, unbelievable stuff. And great to see Derek commentating again. He was out of it for so long, but mm -hmm. you listen to him. He's so insightful. And Jojo, you are, without this show, without you, this show is not the same. So Aww, you've got bigger well, things to, bigger things to do do than the basketball show in the future. Once you get really discovered, you're going to go to a whole other level. So we're very lucky. Boost Mobile, without Boost and without the throwback store, um, we just couldn't put this show together. So um, they're huge and we're really grateful. Yeah, no, exactly right. Um, who else comes on? Uh, Nathan, Tom, Maddie as well. Director, Director Dave. Director Dave, is Director the, Dave is, puts is in more hours <laughs> than anybody else for this show behind the scenes. So... Uh, yeah, he um, he's the MVP without that. And for his sake, let's hope that the Knicks can, you know, have a, a relatively deep run in the playoffs. Yes, yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, thank you guys all for watching as well. It has been a pleasure, as always. Uh, bring on next season. Let's do it. All right, catch you later. This is a co-production by News Corp Australia and Closer Sports.